Tips for Teachers with me, Jamie Osborne. Today we are going to be discussing Padlet. Most of you are very familiar now with Padlet and how to use it. And if you are not familiar with how to use it, stay tuned to the end of this video where I've posted a link to where you could download a PDF of how and why you should be using Padlet in your classroom. But today we will be discussing eight practical ways that you can use Padlet in your classroom and you could get started tomorrow. So first of all, a great way to use Padlet in your classroom is to use it to check, check and check. First of all, you can use it to check in with your class and see how they are faring at any point during the day. For instance, in the morning, you might want to just get the general atmosphere of your class and post a couple of questions about how students' stress levels are, how they're feeling, and see what kind of responses you get. Second, you can use Padlet before students check out. So you can use Padlet as a digital exit ticket where students will write a deep understanding or any thoughts that they might have about a lesson or anything that they cover during the day so that you can see where they are at. Third, you can use Padlet to check for student understanding. So students can uh, post what they remember from a previous class before beginning the next lesson. Number two, you can use Padlet as a great brainstorming tool. So for instance, all you need to do is give your students an idea, a topic, or a project, and have each of them add their ideas to a Padlet. Number three, you can use Padlet for anonymous questions. So for instance, if you're talking about something really awkward, say, I don't know, puberty, students can anonymously be posting their awkward questions without being embarrassed um, up on the Padlet. And you can see a live stream of these questions if you're so brave. Or you could just have it on your own computer and not showing so that it's not a live stream. Or you could also have a Padlet up while you are teaching so that students can ask questions as you're teaching and you can respond when you have time. Number four, use Padlet to collect responses. So for instance, you could post a photo, a video, an article, a math problem, whatever. You could post something up on a Padlet and have students respond on the Padlet. Number five, you can document discoveries using Padlet. On a field trip, want to go outside, create a Padlet to document student learning or their photos or their discoveries when they are off campus. Number six, use Padlet with a book study. You can use Padlet to generate class discussion around a class novel, a lit circle book, a short story, or even a poem, or in any text, in fact. So have students write a thought, a question, or epiphany on a Padlet, or you could have them post observations about a character, or setting, or plot, or you could even have them write alternate endings to a story, or you could have them make personal connections about the text and what was meaningful to them. Number seven use Padlet as a resource collection site. If you're stud studying human rights, for instance, you could have students collect a whole bunch of articles or videos about people whose human rights have been violated. Number eight, use Padlet anytime that your class needs to share. Anytime students are expected to uh, share about an event or share a photo or anything like that, you could do this through a Padlet. So for instance, if you study current events in your class, your, each student could be expected to contribute a news article or photo about a current event, and then the next person would add another one, and then at the end of the term, you'd have a whole term full of the current events that you studied that term. There you have it, folks. That is eight tech tips. And as always, I'm available to help you implement any of these ideas in your own classroom. And don't forget to pick up my handy Padlet instruction sheet. And if you're interested in even more ideas, take a look at these websites from which I pulled some of the ideas that we discussed in this video. See you on the next episode of Tech Tips for Teachers.